Yo everybody. What's up everyone? This is Oscar from Underdog and today let's talk about how to make every sound you've ever heard. I know that's a spectacular title. I really just wanted to talk about samplers. Because if you listen to some people online and music production, you would think that uh, being a sound designer is a core element of being uh, a, an electronic music producer. And for some people it is. For some people it is and, and that's awesome, right? That's a, it's a great field to do. But it's not the only way to make sound. Sometimes you just find sounds in your environment and you arrange them into music. You don't need to create every sound from scratch. And that's what samplers are for. Samplers are basically empty boxes that you put any sound that you find into it and then you can play that sound up and down the keyboard. You can do all sorts of complex um, things with it. Basically you can do everything with a sampler that you can do with a subtractive synthesizer. And once you understand how a sampler works, there's really nothing that can stop you from accessing even the most complicated timbres because you can simply sample them from elsewhere. Let me show you really briefly the basics. Imagine I'm working on this track. And I can just record my microphone. The microphone that's right in front of me, right here. I'm just gonna record on a channel. And I'm just gonna sing one note, just a single note, right? And I'm gonna sing badly, sorry. Here we go. Ah. Okay, you see that audio there now? Let's listen to it. You already listened to it, but I haven't. Uh, Oof, blah. <laughs> it's no good, but it doesn't matter. It's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put this into a sampler and play it as if it was an instrument, right? And so the workflow for that in, in Ableton Live, it's as simple as simply dragging that into, the, into a MIDI channel like this, hop, and dragging it down here, and then boom, it appears here. In a, uh, in a By default in Ableton, it's a, a unit called the Simpler, I believe this one is called, right? Which is a kind of a simplified sampler. <laughs> I mean, the type of instrument that it is is a sampler. This particular device is called a Simpler. Ableton has two devices, which are samplers. There is the Simpler and the Sampler. <laughs> I mean, just to confuse things a little bit, but I think you get the point, right? And so now that we've put it in here, let's call this the simpler. I've armed my MIDI channel and I'm soloing it and playing it up and down the keyboard. I'll go down an octave. Okay. When you press C, like the middle C on a keyboard, usually that means that you're telling the sampler to play the sample inside of it at its original pitch. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that when you hit a C on the keyboard that a C is going to come out. So to help this, you can just use a tuner. I'm going to press C on my keyboard. And you see I'm a very shaky, like a little bit flat on the E. I was trying to sing an E obviously, and I go very flat on it. So what I'll do in the sampler is I can just loop a very short section of it. So just hit loop and shorten it really shortly. And let's move the loop around so it doesn't restart all the time. Cool, let's put a fade on there so we don't get that shock so much. And look. I'm kind of, well, I'm still very shaky here. Let's take an even smaller section. Okay, let's maybe find a section where I'm a bit more stable. Those singing classes really didn't pay off, did they? <laughs> ah, here's a section where I'm on key. But So what I could have done was, over here under transpose and detune, I could move the detuning up or down until I'm hitting the note consistently. And because I want C on my keyboard to be really C in the audio domain, I'm going to transpose down from E, down four semitones until I'm at the C. Awesome. So now that's actually playable. So then when I take the chord progression of my song and I just hit play. Awesome. Nice, so now my voice has become a synthesizer. And if you look on the controls here, you see that they're all the same controls as on a subtractive synthesizer. So it works just the same as a subtractive synthesizer in that there's an oscillator that goes into a filter that goes into an amplifier, except the oscillator has now been replaced with my voice. But the filter is still there and the amplifier is still there. So if I wanted to make some plucks, I could just bring down the sustain and to create some plucks. And that could be cool. Imagine putting a whole bunch of delay behind there. So that's a cool 
cool sound. That's a cool sound. Just to bring it the tonality up a bit, I would put on an OTT. Not so bad. And then, honestly, in Ableton, what I would really do is I would right click, do simpler to sampler, where you can just change the crossfading a little bit better of the loop. So it's a little bit smoother. On the attack, I would maybe put one or two milliseconds of attack. Nice. Then all you gotta do from here is EQ out some of the some of the more obnoxious frequencies. Oof. <laughs> that OTT is really doing crazy stuff. And then inside of the track. You can even put an ARP on there. You can do anything with it that a synthesizer can do. Whoa, that's pretty crazy, that's pretty crazy. Let's make it even tighter. Look at that. It's an interesting sound right there. It's kind of percussive. And it's all for my voice. Another fun thing that the sampler allows you to do is to put on some spread so that it makes two copies slightly detuned from each other and makes them very stereo wide. And also you can put a pitch envelope on there at the start of every hit to make things more percussive because having a pitch envelope that sweeps down very sharply at the start of a sound can make things a bit more percussive if you want. I don't think that would suit this sound, so I'm not gonna do it, but I just wanted to mention it because those are some really classic techniques. But you don't have to sing into your DAW if you're not comfortable with that. You can also just go find some sounds out in the world. For example, this Waldorf Iridium synthesizer. I can't afford it right now, but I would love to use its sound. Well, let's find it. Let's find a nice clean section so that I can just drop it in. Maybe not a chord. Oh, that's good. That's a cool section. I feel like if I looped that, it could become a really cool washi drone. I like it, let's do that. All right, I use OBS to screen capture stuff. You can do YouTube to MP3 or whatever websites or stuff you use to download sounds from YouTube. Do be careful for viruses, those websites are sketchy as heck. All right, cool, here's the sound in Ableton. Loving it. So let's find the washi sounds. Okay, that's the section. Let's loop that. So let's first of all do Command E and just delete some of this. And this is what we're going to load into a sampler, right? Okay, let's delete all that. I'm going to do Command J, which consolidates this. So there's no like uh, information before or after this little clip. So what I'll do, insert MIDI track. On that MIDI track, I'm going to go to Instruments and take a sampler. This is the non-shortcut way, right? So then we drag that into the sampler and here is a sound that we want. And so when I hit C, it's going to play from the beginning. So first of all, let's set the starting point to where I want it to be. Love it. Let's set the sustain mode to back and forth and let's make it loop some section in the middle and crossfade that. I dig this. I dig this. And so the idea behind this now for me is I just want to wash this out into a reverb. So I'm going to take a, an effect. I'm going to take something large like a Valhalla room, make it really long. So there's no real rhythm in it. I just want it to kind of, yeah, wash out. What a great sound. What a great sound. And now let me draw in a little MIDI clip here. Command Shift M and just play a note. And remember now, I did not make sure in this case that C on the keyboard actually corresponds to C on the synthesizer. I'm gonna do it by ear, right? So I'm gonna hit play. Not too bad. 
little bit out of tune, but not terribly so. And so as you can see now, we can start puzzling because basically I've just found a sound in the wild that I want to put into my production. And now the job just becomes how do I fit it in in a way that's not intrusive, that's actually adding something. And in this case, I'm not going to puzzle too hard because I didn't really give it a chance. But I want to share with you the moment that this technique really clicked for me as a legitimate technique. I watched this movie called Annihilation, which has this really crazy soundtrack. And at the climax of the soundtrack, there are some super freaky synths that are absolutely beautiful. And a friend of mine in Frankfurt called Oli, Oli, if you're watching this, miss you, man. What he did was he bought the soundtrack of this, right? And he loaded it into a sampler and then he triggered it in a rhythmical way so that he could use the timbre of those crazy synths but make a completely different composition from it. So for example, what you would do is you'd make yourself a MIDI device, go back to instruments, you'd put the sampler in there, you'd take the soundtrack which you bought and then convert it to WAV file, right? And you're going to listen to the various parts that could work. That's awesome. That's a great sound. Notice the clicking on the start. You hear that? That's something you hear a lot in audio. When you hear that little click at the start, that means that your envelopes are starting or stopping too quickly. And so all you have to do is go into your envelopes and just like in subtractive synthesis, add a tiniest little bit of attack to the start, like one millisecond. No more clicking. Clicking. No more clicking. So now you can play this on your keyboard and you can make crazy riffs with it. Speaking of crazy riffs, for example, if you took the Reason Rack plugin and you added a player device, specifically the baseline generator, hopla. This is included in the Reason Plus subscription, by the way. I am their ambassador after all. And so you take the MIDI that comes out of this and you feed it into this channel. You hit in, you select Reason, and then you get this. Now let's search for some sweet spots. Let's increase the octave. Here we go. It's the start of a track. Okay, imagine you've got something like this, right? Now, as a synthesizer, I would say I want control over the envelopes, which you can do here. You can go into the envelopes, change the release. Nice. And then you can also change the filter. You can have the filter be closed. You can then, for every note, make the filter open up by increasing the envelope amount. Where is that again? Mm, yeah, here, amount. Nice. Let's change the shape a little bit. Put the release on there. Yeah. Close it even further. Make it a bit more Moog-like. Moog and here you go. Now you're doing subtractive synthesis using timbres that come from special magical universes that you might be emotionally attached to, uh, but you didn't have to create from scratch. Using this soundtrack as a starting point may be nostalgic for Frankfurt. So uh, yeah, funny times. Anyway, I hope this helps you understand the potential of uh, a sampler. And if you want another idea to get you out into the DAW, try taking a vocal phrase, right? And setting the sample start point somewhere in the middle of a vowel, like ah, right? Then putting that entire sampler group it to a drum rack and duplicate the instrument into a couple of different pads of the drum rack. And for each of those samplers, change the starting point to a different vowel. And then play that drum rack like an instrument. So you get a, o, e, a, u, a, e, a, like that kind of stuff. 
try that out. If the subtractive synthesis part of this was at all confusing, I highly recommend that you check out the subtractive synthesis videos that I've done or follow my Foundations of Electronic Music course. It's on my website. Come show us on the Discord channel what you've done with this. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another, and take care. Bye-bye.